Hello, you're welcome back. All right, so we are gonna continue from where we stop. Okay, we are still on uh, uh, magnetic field and magnetization. Okay, so uh, previously we actually discussed the magnetic field due to a current carrying conductor. Now we are going to be looking at um, uh, the force. Okay, on a current carrying conductor placed in the magnetic field. So you already know that that. You already know that a conductor carrying current has magnetic field around it. So it simply means that if we for we learned that uh, if we have a conductor and of course this conductor is carrying a current, okay, there's magnetic field around this conductor. So now if I happen to actually bring this conductor, okay, uh, in uh, uh, a magnetic field, okay, that is actually generated by two bar magnets. At either side of this conductor all right there's going to be an interaction the magnetic field of the conductor all right we interact with the inter the mag we interact with the magnetic field of the bar magnet and because of that there's going to be a force okay force will be experienced now that force on the force whenever there's a force there's going to be a motion now since uh, the bar magnet is actually fixed the bar magnet is said to be fixed okay now the wire is not actually fixed, but the wire is actually probably uh if it is fixed, it's actually fixed at an axis, all right. So now there's gonna be a force already, as you already know, due to that interaction, and that force is gonna produce motion. Okay, so we're gonna have three things. First, we're gonna have a force, a force will be uh exerted on this uh on this conductor, and of course there's gonna be motion. The conductor will actually move. In response to the force that is exerted on it and of course there is still gonna be a magnetic field right the bar magnet we also have magnetic field so three vector quantities okay are actually involved force motion and magnetic field so we're gonna be looking at their direction the direction of the force the direction of the motion of the conductor and of course the direction of the magnetic field the direction of the magnetic field okay so we are going to be looking at uh, this three uh the direction the direction of these three uh important parameters okay so now how do we actually get to uh, uh get this uh three direction all right we apply Fleming's left hand rule as you can see in this diagram so there are three parameters force magnetic field and of course uh, current okay force magnetic field okay please don't make a mistake both the force and the motion okay they are the, the motion will go in the direction of the force so these are together these two are together so the motion will go in the direction of force the, the, this is the number one parameter this is number two parameter so the number three parameter is actually the current okay the electric current flowing through the conductor so these are the three parameters that we need to get their direction so now here we are Fleming's left hand rule okay now it is a rule that will help us to determine the direction of this three the magnetic field the current and of course the force now the rule said that if the three fingers okay if the two fingers and the thumb are placed at right angle to each other this is the thumb, right? This right here is the thumb. And uh, here we have the. Let me get a. Uh, let me change the my color, the color of my. So here, this is the thumb. This is the uh, first finger, and of course, this is the middle finger. So they actually place at right angle to each other. Okay, so the rule is that. Okay. In that case, since they are placed at right angle to each other, now if the uh, the tongue, uh, if the middle finger, please, pardon me, if the middle finger actually point in the direction of the current, as you can see, this uh, this actually this the setup. I have two bar magnets, okay. Then I have a conductor. This is the conductor here, right here, okay. That's actually is actually horizontal. So now the middle finger actually uh indicates the direction of the current flowing through this conductor then if that happens then as you can see 
the thumb will actually go in the direction of the motion. So invariably now this conductor now, okay, will definitely a force will be exerted on this conductor that will cause it to rotate. Okay, then of course the first finger actually goes in the direction of the magnetic field. All right, so let me actually state that again. If the first finger, middle finger, and the thumb is placed at right angle to each other, okay, with the middle finger uh, pointed in the direction of the current, then the thumb will point in the direction of the force, while the first finger will point in the direction of the magnetic field. All right, so that is exactly that simply means that can actually represent that okay so let's say you have this so so this right here this right here okay uh, this line here is the it's gonna be a line for the field it's gonna be for the field okay this right here <coughs> actually indicates if this indicator uh, the current then of course this uh, will indicate the force all right so let me write a left hand rule okay so we proceed now let's actually lead our uh, Derive the expression for the magnetic force. Okay, so the magnetic force. That's the expression now we want to derive. Magnetic force. And of course, we use the symbol F. Okay, so the magnetic force on a current carry conductor in the magnetic field. Is calculated using the formula BIL. BIL, then of course, uh, multiply by sine theta. So, this is the formula we use in evaluating the force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. All right. So, of course, you know what the B is the B is uh, uh, the flux density, magnetic, magnetic flux. Or the magnetic field okay the same thing all right magnetic force density we have the i which of course is uh represent the electric current okay so now sign the theta the sign of the angle theta is the angle so it's actually the angle all right between um, the conductor and the field the angle between the conductor and the field so we simply means that which is we simply means that if we have uh, the the conductor being inclined at an angle let's say the conductor is not perpendicular to the field okay is inclined at an angle I say this angle theta <coughs> at this part of it then definitely if i want to evaluate the force i must have to okay uh include the sign of the angle theta okay there's just one parameter that i have not uh listed that is the l which you know is the length okay now when the angle when the conductor is actually perpendicular to the magnetic field okay if this conductor is perpendicular to the magnetic field that simply means that the angle theta is equal to 90 degrees and of course if we should evaluate sin 90 with your calculator sin 90 is equal to 1 okay so that's simply and of course sin 90 is the maximum the maximum sign of of an angle the maximum sign you can uh, sign of an angle you can ever get is sign 90. Okay, so which simply means that 
for you to have the maximum force exerted on this conductor all right the maximum force is exerted on the conductor when the angle between the conductor and the magnetic field is 90 degrees and of course at that point sign if we do say that is that is one so that means the maximum force okay is going to be equal to from this formula that's going to be b i l then sine 90 which of course is one one times b i l is still b i l okay so this is the formula when the force is said to be maximum all right so the formula for the maximum force experienced by a conductor in a magnetic field all right so let's look at a typical example so let's say a situation where you're being asked to find the force all right all right current of a conductor carrying the current of uh, two upper and of course the length of the conductor is uh let me use 20 cm all right and given that the conductor is equal at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal to the uh, magnetic field so such we apply a formula force is going to be equal to bil and of course sine theta this is going to be equal to b is uh okay i'm not giving the b magnetic force density the magnetic force density of 20 tesla so from here i'm gonna have 20 tesla multiplied by the current 2 multiplied by the length which of course convert that to cm that's 0 0.2 then sine sine theta so this is gonna be equal to 40 times 0 0.2 times sine theta sine theta is 0 0.5 right so 40 times 0 0.5 that's 20 20 times 0 0.2 that should give me 4 if i'm not mistaken okay so if i confirm that with calculator so the force is 4 newton I hope that is well understood all right so let's actually proceed now here we are going to be looking at uh, uh, we'll be looking at the force force on this time around on a charge so not on a wire okay Let's say that I have force on a charge that is accelerating through a magnetic field, especially what you have in a, in a device <clears throat> known as the oscilloscope. Okay, oscilloscope is actually a device that actually that projects electron, okay, and that cast it on the screen to produce image. All right, so of course that is uh, this is the device that is actually use a constructed the cathode ray television that uh that have been replaced by uh, the plasma television that is very common now all right so now that device oscilloscope has electron okay is this is how it is it has electron of course electron carries charge right accelerated and this electron accelerates, okay. It's gonna accelerate through the influence of magnetic field, which can actually cause it to deflate, okay, and of course be cast on the screen to produce uh, an image. So we simply mean that any time electron is meant to pass through magnetic field, then that electron will equally experience a charge. All right, it is really a force, please, but be so that's what we're looking at. Uh, force on a charge, okay. And of course, you know, charge carriers are basically electron, okay. Charge force on a charge in a magnetic field, so how do we derive the formula for that? We already know that the force on uh a conductor is given by BIL sine theta. 
okay so we are going to do some adjustments so that we we can actually incorporate charge okay so since we are dealing with charge you know very well that current is giving us uh, the quantity of charge okay the quantity of charge passing through a conductor per unit time so in this case now i'm gonna re i'm going to uh actually substitute for current in this expression and at the same time you should also know that uh, velocity of a charge of or an electron okay the velocity of an electron is given as displacement all over time and of course the displacement is length divided by time okay that way now if i should cross multiply all right i will have that length is going to be equal to velocity multiplied by time okay so this are just my the two the two parameters i need to substitute okay i'm going to substitute for the current and of course for the length into this expression all right so let's go there so we can express force to be equal to uh b i which is already q all over t then of course multiply by the length okay which is a uh, vt okay, let me just put that as vt then before i can now multiply by sine of theta t cancels t so you now have that f is going to be equal to bqv then the sine of theta all right so i hope that is well understood so that is formula no bow will i call it what okay you can decide to optimize it in any, in any way you wish all right for example let's look at a situation where you're being asked uh, okay let's say uh, you're being given that the force on an electron is uh is 20 newton okay and uh uh, that electron of course uh, electronic charge okay let's say the electronic charge the charge of the electron or uh, is 1.6 times terrace power of minus 13 columns columns okay and uh, so you're being asked to evaluate the velocity of that electron okay if the electron move perpendicular okay to the magnetic field so if that be the case you apply this that's going to be f okay apply that f already is out to it okay i'm not giving the b okay the b still remain 20 tesla so let's flow f is equal to 20 newton b is 20 Tesla Q is a uh, 1.6 times terrace the power of minus 30. Then we are looking for V times V, then times side side 90 perpendicular. Of course, and that is one. So that way now I can make V the subject. V is gonna be equal to 20 <coughs> divided by 20 then times 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19 okay 20 cancels 20 so i'm just gonna have one divided by 1.6 okay let's get a calculator okay here we go one one divided by 1.6 so that's gonna be zero point two six five zero point six two five okay don't forget that this power of ten just by minus that it will have to go up okay so and of course if it goes up it will be reciprocal so the minus will disappear okay so that's interpretation for so that means the velocity of the electron is uh is given as zero point six two five that times ten the power of 19 meter per seconds you can decide to put that in standard form by moving the moving the decimal points okay one decimal uh, place forward okay so if i move the decimal point 
this map what what this map is forward i'm gonna have 6.25 all right then of course because i move this forward i have to reduce the power of 10 by one so that's gonna be terrace to power 18 now meter per second so that is the velocity of the electron all right so i hope that is well understood okay so please take note i've already uh, describe that at the time you have a current carry conductor carry current at this deep place in the magnetic field it will express a force so that's going to be a direction the force will have direction the magnetic field will have direction and of course the current also ha will have direction all right and we talked about uh, the force or the uh, a charge that is uh moving in the magnetic field so we are going to describe okay the talk okay experience talk on a cylindrical cylindrical cause cylindrical call of all this a cylindrical call is uh okay it's not cylindrical rectangular please pardon me talk on a rectangular call rectangular Of course, rectangular coil carry current in a magnetic field. Okay. So now, for us to actually extend extend the study of uh, force on the conducting the magnetic field, okay, it will make small meaning way well without uh, uh, consider it consider a coil that is uh, a rectangular coil placed in the magnetic field. Why? Because this is of a more practical importance. Why is it of a more practical importance? Importance, okay? The electric motor that, okay, you normally you use, okay, basically at home for private grinding, is actually being constructed using this principle. What's the principle? The principle is, anytime you have a coil placed in the magnetic field, the force on that particular coil will create a torque, and of course. What is a torque? The question is, what's a torque? Torque is simply turning effect. So anytime you hear of the word torque, okay, it is actually the turning effect of a force. So turning effect. Of a force. So that means this force on that particular conductor or the coil actually create a total defect and that is why that particular coil can now rotate okay uh that, that that is what you see in an electric motor so that's what we're going to calculate okay we are going to calculate that so the formula for the torque torque okay of a rectangular core in a magnetic field is actually given by the formula B A N. That's Bani, okay? Bani. B A N I. Bani, then of course alpha. Okay? So now let's actually uh, list out these parameters. The B already know what that is, okay? Our magnetic plasticity. Our magnetic plasticity. That's what that represents. A is going to be the area of the core. So that means the larger the area of the core, the more top that particular core, okay? actually expresses all right as we proceed the n is the number of toes number of toes of the core <coughs> excuse me i is actually of of all the current flowing through the core <coughs> then the cos alpha the alpha that is going to be the angle all right 
between the floss okay that's actually going to the core okay uh the angle between the let's the the core all right with the horizontal angle between the core okay of course at the horizontal horizontal magnetic field so so of course the core what i mean is actually the the angle actually between the surface because we see that the core is rectangular all right so let's let me illustrate what i mean by this uh by this alpha let's say you now have let's say the pole north and south we are dealing with a rectangular core so since it's rectangular we're looking at um possibly this is what you are looking at okay the the situation where okay the coil actually rotates around this this is rectangular okay so now the area the surface area of the core okay so this angle here is actually the angle that the surface area of the coil actually makes with the horizontal magnetic field right that's this is the angle alpha so angle between the surface area let me just put that well so that you will not get confused angle between the surface area area of the core all right and the horizontal magnetic field so that is the formula for the torque all right of uh, torque on a rectangular coil carrying current okay placed in the magnetic field so that simply means that from this uh, formula we can simply conclude that okay the more we have uh, uh, the more the flux density of that magnetic field the more you have the, a, a uh, the more the flux density of the magnetic field the more torque you get because everything here all these parameters are directly proportional and of course the more current that is supplied to the core the more torque that's the more torque okay you actually get all right so that is it for now i will not apply this but just take note of this formula right even if i apply it now or later okay what is important of in this particular video is that you remember all these important basic formula because you are going to be encountering you're going to encounter them in uh, the forthcoming examination right so we are going to continue in the next video see you in the next video thank you very much